So today we're doing a install of a lift pump on a, it's like a 27, 16, 7, I don't remember right now. So what this pump is going to do is create fuel pressure to the CP3. From the factory, these trucks have a little tiny uh, factory lift pump into the tank. But once you start adding power, that factory pump, it's only meeting factory demand. It's not meeting the new power demand that you put on the truck. So that's why we're gonna add this pump. It's also gonna add extra filtration through these two filters right here. On top of that, this thing takes the air out of the fuel. You do not want air in your fuel. When it's just straight fuel, it's a nice cushion. When you have air in there, it creates harder uh, pulses on the injector when the plunger comes up and down. Think of if I was to, I was, I was the punches table right now. All I have is air right here. I punch it, it would hurt pretty bad. Now give me a bucket of water right to here and I punch this table, it's gonna hurt a lot less because that water is going to cushion my punch in. That's kind of the best way I can think of to explain it. Now this video is not going to be super in-depth on the install, mainly because I already have a video that went over selecting the right lift pump for you in that video I'll put up here, link to a little card. Of selecting the right lift pump, what's going to be best for your truck, and then going over the lift pump itself. So this is kind of going to be real brief, just maybe to help you out if you're installing a lift pump on your commons or to give you something to watch right now. This thing has two filters, like I said. One is a particulate filter. The other one is a water separator filter. So this is gonna be my outlet to the tank. We're gonna run a sump on this truck. So after we get it mounted, I'll put this mounting plane on here. Usually what I like to do is just get this whole pump prepped and ready to go into the truck before I get into it. And then we can run our hose. Jordan's working on the wiring out there right now. But I'll go out next and show you guys the sump. Beans Diesel, these are the ones I offer with the uh, lift pumps on uh, mddperformance.com. Main reason I really like these pumps, or these uh, sumps right here, is because of the single O-ring. A lot of the different brands, you'll see a bunch of little holes around here. The problem is when you have that many holes, it creates that many spots for this thing to leak. So this pretty simple design, but very smart. This has a little uh, cutout here so that you can get it into the tank and fish it up and in and kind of roll it like that. The bottom screw or bolt has a little O-ring on it. And then these two fittings right here have O-rings as well. You don't have to worry about Teflon tape. So these are gonna screw into the side. One's gonna be a feed, one's gonna be a return. Uh, tank will clamp right in between here, clamps down like that. Our uh, bolt here will come from the bottom, pull this plate and then suck that O-ring tight between the tank. So I'll show you back here on the truck where exactly we're putting it. You got, you got to be uh, pretty strategic with your placement because your sending unit is about right here and you wouldn't want to go directly under that. So right here we have a hole that's just been draining the tank. You can see the fuel down in there. And then after that, this will be your center point for our hole saw so we can drill or uh, so we can hole saw that out and then have a full circle to put the sump into. Here's the wiring harness. This thing has been upgraded when they, they went to the signature titanium series over just the titanium series they went to a lot b for your harness with the wiring itself and then the connectors you can see the i can't remember the gauge wire you can see how thick it is in there and uh, even just the weight of this thing is super heavy way overkill but it's very nice to have that now as far as mounting this pump goes this is the bracket pretty much every fast kit's going to come with this and they're going to come off of a bed bolt so the bed bolt is gonna slide up to this top section and then the pump has a bracket that comes off it. I'll show you that mounts to this right here. So that way we can move it up and down, left to right. And it's a nice uh, way to be able to position it right where you want it. For the Cummins trucks, this bed bolt was up. Uh, let's see if we can try and get a good angle on it. Right in there, you can see the shiny portion right there. That's where it just came out of. They give you a nice access point. So straight up through here from a side profile you're coming up through all the suspension the four link and all that what i do is i just link to like a 15 inch and then what's this like a four inch extension on the end 17 millimeter run the whole way up there unfortunately can't use the impact because with that many extensions it just completely rubs it of any power so what i had to do is using my little 3 8 ratchet breaker bar to run it loose to get past the loctite because that is not easy to go through then I could get my gun on it and then just take it the rest of the way off. So now the next step is to sandwich this plate into the bed bolt right there. That way this top half is mounted. Or, or sorry, it'd be the other way around. So it'll sit up like this up into the bed. Since these Cummins trucks have lift pumps from the factory, it makes the wiring super easy as far as like a trigger wire. You don't have to worry about finding a fuse for anything like you do on the GM trucks. What you do is you take off on top of the tanks on the sending unit. You can see right in the middle of that gray connector. That is the factory one we're going to take off. That harness up there, which is essentially this thing right here, it's another replica of it. It does two things. 
It has a sending unit, so it tells your fuel gauge what it's at. And secondly, it also tells the lift pump when to turn on and off. So that's where this goes in to get the uh, cue from the factory wire and you tell the lift pump to turn on, but you, you can't just completely eliminate it because you need your tank sending unit for the float to be able to tell the fuel level. So that's where it will splice in to the FAS. So essentially, the this will go onto the tank. Your factory harness will go into here. So that way you're using the sending unit from that. And then the power, instead of going to the factory lift pump in the tank, it's now gonna go to this right here, which is gonna go to your fast lift pump. Up at the engine bay, we only have two connections here, like I said, because you don't need a trigger wire, it's already done by that sending unit on top of the tank with a harness. So we're just getting our two positive and negative wires crimped on there. We ended up using our own weather pack connectors here. These are waterproof, so we didn't have to worry about that. After that, this fitting is gonna go on the back of the CP3, essentially just let you run a line directly from your CP or from the fast the whole way up to the CP3 pump and you can see the pump right down in there and then uh, that line there I'll show you once it's all said and done this is the factory fitting we got off of the CP3 that's that push lock style that took this line right here and you can see or you can almost see down in the back of that CP3 in that open spot right there that's where that inlet is for the pump so we're gonna put the fast one in. As you can see, this side that goes in a pump is gonna be the same, then the outside is gonna be the difference. This is gonna be able to allow us to put on one of the uh, fast threaded pieces so that we can go ahead and just slip our barb fitting onto it versus this style. Well, here's about the thickness of that tank. So you can see about half the width of my finger, pretty thick amount of plastic. The inside is that sort of whitish color and the black is on the outside. So the way that goes in, it slips in, you kind of ride the inside of it, push it up and in, and now we have it in place, it centers itself on the hole. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab the bottom half of the sump to suck into that threaded hole right there and pull the uh, sump sealed against this tank torque that center bolt down to 22 foot pounds which i'd say is actually pretty important because you want to be able to smash that o-ring enough so we're going to set this thing to 22 foot pounds rounding our lines we got the return right there which is on the right side of the pump this hose right here above that is the feed up to the engine we just pretty much ran that along the frame up the front on top of the frame there with the factory wiring can't really see it at all which is good and then on the other side, we're gonna have this suction on the left side of the pump, and that's going to go to the other fitting on the sump right there. And it is specific of which one is feed and return, so make sure you remember, left is return, right is feed. Well, we just got this thing wrapped up. I didn't get a video of priming the filters because that was kind of a messy job, as you can see. But what we did, underneath here, you want this filter to be tight, the one closest to the suction, and then the one farthest away from the suction, which should be facing the front of the truck, you want the one to be just unscrewed a little bit so that the air can come through here, push out up here where you have it loose. And then once a little bit of fuel starts to come out, tighten this real quick. It's tricky on these common trucks because it's not like a, like a trigger wire in a Duramax where the key is off, it's off, the key is on, it's on. It has to run a cycle of priming. So you're not gonna be able to, even if you shut the key off, it's gonna still keep running a little bit. So make sure that, uh, nice to have two people to do this or else it gets a little messy as you uh, can see down below there. But yeah, make sure you're priming us before you uh, go ahead and try and start the truck and push all the fuel. And for the comments, like I said, cycle the key on and off. It might take like four or five times to get the fuel. Granted, this was an easy suction line going right into there. Sorry, this one right here. So it was uh, didn't take long to get the fuel into there. But with that all wrapped up, that also wraps up this video. So guys, thank you very much for watching it. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you enjoy the channel, check out other videos, doing other truck stuff. There's plenty more to come and we're gonna do another mod on this right now. So thanks again guys for watching and we will see you in the next video.